All right, so what we're going to be tying here is uh, the atoms. Uh, what I have in the vise is a TMCO 100 size 12. Uh, I'm just going to be using some 80 Rusty Done. We can use gray thread, black thread, white thread, color it black, gray, green, whatever. Now well, maybe not green. That'd look a little odd. But anyway, you get the idea. So, without further ado, we're going to get started. All I'm going to do is I'm going to start my thread about a bodkin width behind the eye. Now, I always check for my distance here to make sure I've got at least a bodkin width. I'm just a little over there, and that'll work. And I'm going to bring my thread back to about the third position, and I'm going to trim off that tag. And I'm going to bring my thread forward until I'm right, at, right about two bodkin widths behind the eye. You know, I don't have to be precise on that, but the width of a bodkin is a good gauge. Um, so I hope you guys use that. So next, what we need is our wings. And I've got a pair of hen wings and grizzly. And I'm just going to turn them around so that the convex side are facing each other. I like to get them stem to stem. Make sure that these guys line up. If you touch one tip to the other, do they, do they basically line up? Yeah, they're pretty close. This one's a little shy. You want to try to get this part right, right off the bat. Because you're not going to be able to fix it later. So once I have that, as with all the other dubbed dry flies, I like to put my wing tip right up behind the eye of the hook. I'll kind of pinch it in place and figure out roughly where I'm going to start drawing the barbs back. The distance with the, uh, this is getting our distance, and the distance that we want, or that I prefer anyway, some people like their wings a little taller and that's cool too, is I like to whoop, I like to get this bare stem lined up with about the barb when I line these up in the front and I'm probably just a little shy there and wings can always take a minute so as, you'll, as you've seen or will see in other dry fly videos Take, uh, that I'm doing anyway. Take take your extra minute or so to really make sure you get your wings right, because uh, the wings can make all the difference in the world on the bigger ones anyway. When you get into those smaller patterns, say you're going to tie this Adams on a uh, say like a 22. Uh, quite frankly, you can probably forget about the wings. So now that I've pulled the barbs back and I've got this little exposed spot on the stem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that stem up to where my thread is resting. I'm going to twist my thread so I get a nice little rope there. And I'm going to bring it over once. And I want that thread resting right on the stem. There we go. So I'm going to just do two easy wraps so that I can twist my, <clears throat> excuse me, so I can twist my wings and put them uh, and place them on top. And we're kind of going for this mohawk look and I don't quite have that. That's why you keep your thread wrap loose right here. So that you have a chance to really get that. So that's that's looking pretty good. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently pull these barbs back and I'm going to tightly wrap all this back in until I get to this point back here where I, my hair is bugging me, until I get to this point right here where my thread stopped in that third position. And doing this part is one of the, is I think is one of the critical parts of creating a solid dry fly and the reason for that is um, you're gonna have hackle resting on this point and 
if your thread wraps are kind of wonky or you have stems shooting through there or whatever, uh, tilting to one side or the other, it's going to make your uh, it's going to make wrapping the hackle that much more difficult. So always try to take care of that. So we can cut those out, and I'll just come in with my fingernail clippers and. Now oh, that little hair will be fine. We'll wrap that in. So now we're just going to continue tight touching turns. You're going to have a little drop off there, and that's okay. Don't worry about that little drop off. Now we're just going to wrap these guys in. If they pop out, we can trim them away. No big deal. And we're going to take this back to about the barb of the hook. <clears throat> Excuse me. Throat's a little dry this evening. And do one more. There we go. Okay, so we've got these little guys there. We can come in and kind of trim those away. <coughs> Excuse me. So next, what we need is our tailing material. So we're going to need a brown. I'm actually using kind of a furnace. I just like the furnace look um, for, the, for the grizzly. Or I'm sorry, I like the furnace look with the grizzly for the atoms. There you go. So what I'll do is I'll kind of line these up. I'll take my two feathers, since we're going to be using two different colors, and I'll um, get it to where I can pull these apart and move them down so that the tips kind of naturally line up. Now, my grizzly is a little bit tall, so I can just kind of... It takes a little finessing, but you can kind of work it until you get the tips lined up basically at the same point and when you have that you're going to want to grab grab a clump and when I do the atoms uh, I typically grab a little bit more than normal since I'm blending the two colors and you'll see how these stems kind of go wonky a little bit from one another and that's no big deal so once you have your the tips lined up straight and you're pinching them with your left uh, thumb right in um, left thumb left index take your right thumb right index Kind of grab up top, pull up and away. And then you can just kind of clump it all together. And your tips are going to be somewhat even. Now we have all this mess in the back. And what we need to do is get rid of that. Any of this, you can see all this stuff that's here. Whoops, a little high there. Any of the stuff that's here that came off the stem, if we don't get rid of that, you don't have to cut it all straight. But if you don't get rid of that stuff, uh, you can't roll the uh, you can't roll the fibers together, so you can kind of trim it like that. I just go ahead and trim it straight. Sorry, I know that was out of camera, but uh, so anyway, now you can kind of do this number and kind of pinch back and forth until they start to kind of come together and blend a little bit. And you kind of roll it a little bit. Just be careful so you don't you don't want to get them out of line. It's a real pain in the butt to get line them back up. So there we go. I've got a nice, I've got a pretty decent blend there. So next we need to get a distance. And so what I want to, what I like to do here, get those wings kind of sitting up top a little bit better, is I want to come in up front and I want to get my. I like to have my tail from the uh, eye the front of the eye to basically where my thread is. Okay, and so you're going to have to kind of roll them around and play with them a little bit until you have basically that distance. Okay, now I'm going to place those directly on top of the hook shank in the back. I'm going to transfer that distance. I'm going to put one loose wrap over, and I'm going to, when I tighten these, I'm tightening them as I go up so that they don't roll. I'm going to come back down. Okay, now I can move my hand away and kind of gauge where those are at. And you know what? That's actually sitting pretty good. So next what I'm going to do is just going to go ahead and pinch those again. And I'm going to slowly bring that thread over, pull on the way up, loosely over the top, pull on the way up, loosely over the top, pull on the way up. And now once you have about four or five wraps in there, these guys aren't really going to go anywhere. Okay. Cool. So, let me get my sharp scissors. I've got like 15 pairs of scissors that I use for different things. So, 
what we're looking for here is if you kind of pull this back, you'll see, and if you followed some of the other dry flies we've done with uh, dubbing bodies, it's, this is all the same techniques, but this time we're, you know, we're adding two different colors, so we've got to blend that there, and then we're going to do two different colors for the hackle. Uh, so right, right about here is where you see that little lump, and this is where our hackle is going to go. So what I like to do is I like to try to get that, all, this, uh, all these butt ends situated right over that lump, and I'll just kind of take my fingers right up top, and I like to cut them straight off, at least at that point. Now you've got a little gauge of where you can come back in and trim the rest of them so that they line up. Uh, the goal here is just simply to do your best to get this point and these barb, uh, the, the butts of these barbs to line up so that we can uh, tie them in. <clears throat> well, that dry throat tonight, man. So, and same thing, loose over the top, pull up, loose over the top, pull up. And uh, this little technique I find works really well with basically any kind of uh, dry fly, uh, you know, and don't be afraid to practice this with other, um, say you're going to use a quill body or something like that, don't be afraid to do the same kind of technique. Uh, it transfers pretty well. I'm getting pretty close there and I just don't quite have enough taken off. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do a little grooming. So we really want this part here to be nice and clean. If you followed along with this in some of the other dry fly videos uh, that I've done, um, you know these techniques are these are basic techniques, they're beginner techniques, uh, and you can really get them to transfer uh, to a lot of different patterns. But uh, you know you want to make sure you're consistent, and that's a big key as you progress forward. So now we're just going to continue wrapping and we're going to bring it all the way up see and that worked out pretty much just about right and we're going to continue this thread forward because now we're going to place our wings uh, the one thing we're going to do different on this pattern that we didn't do on the other patterns is I'm going to show you how I use the stems off the hackle to build uh, a taper uh, will help build the taper on the underbody instead of bringing your stem forward we're going to take the stems back but anyway we'll get there in a second so now you can lift your wings up like so and they're going to a lot of the times they're going to kind of stick together a little bit so we got to try to feather those apart a little bit and start placing them where we want them and You'll, uh, if you're, especially if you're using hen, you're going to start to see, I, I, well, one, I think hen makes the better wing material. But uh, for two, you're going to start to see some of these things kind of break away. So uh, I found that it's pretty crucial at this point to come in and uh, groom all this and, and just get rid of it and trim it out and get it out of your way uh, to the best of your ability. So we're not having to mess with that later. And always have fingernail clippers in there, so you can just kind of come in and nip it. Cool. All right. Cool. My wings are actually probably just a little bit farther forward than I want. So now we're going to jump that thread to the front side and place about three wraps right in front. All right. <clears throat> Goal here is to get these wings to stand straight up or just to the back. On the atoms now, we want to do the figure eight. So we're going to come from the upper right to the lower back left. And we're going to come from the upper back left to the lower front right. I'm going to lift these wings. I'm going to put one more well-placed thread wrap right in front of those stems to pop those guys up. And now I'm going to bring that thread all the way to the back you get when you do this make sure you don't butt into those stems so they do this you don't want to do that so make sure you kind of let that rest just before you get to those stems from the wings <clears throat> and now i'm going to wrap back to my original third position 
Nice, tight, touching turns. Leave them there. If you like to use glue, now is a good time uh, to help keep them in place. So I like using the solar res. Uh, I've used super glue here for a long time. I don't care for uh, the cement anymore. It just it's. I mean, it works great, but the you know you just end up wasting a bunch of it. So I'll split that. I'll turn on the side so you can see. Uh, I'll just get a dab of uh, this UV resin on my bodkin, and I'm going to come down right in the middle and just place that. I'll turn them up like this, and this gives me a chance to really set those wings where I want them. Make sure you wipe your bodkin off too. Cap up your UV resin, or wipe off your super glue, whatever you're using. So kind of really get those set and placed where you want them. <clears throat> And it's darn dry throat. Then you can come in and blast it. Okay. Uh, normally you should kind of do like an on and off thing. We covered that with Anastasia's Papadopoulos uh, on the on the uh, Solar Res tutorial. But uh, anyway, come in there and blast it. Now, what we're going to do different this time? Since we have two different color hackles. You got a brown, or in this case, I've got a furnace brown and your standard grizzly. Uh, you gotta decide which color you want up front. And it, quite frankly, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I have always liked the brown color being up front. So when you're looking at it this way towards you, you're seeing that brown, and then on the back side, you're seeing a nice grizzly. I, I don't know why, uh, to me, that's aesthetically pleasing, but it certainly is for me. But uh, you can do it either way, it's no big deal. So. We're gonna line these stems up, okay? And I'm gonna draw out these barbulates, and I wanna get an even amount off of both sides. Uh, it's easier for me to do it this way. There we go. Now, the side of the stem that you're gonna be wrapping in, I have found that it works best to strip a little bit off of that side. For me, it's gonna be the shiny side of this feather. And so I like to, actually, if I split these apart, you can see it a little bit better. You can see how I kinda of have, on the well, on this grizzly anyway. Uh, it starts, the barbs start a little lower here and I strip this part up. And I do that on both hackles, and the reason for that is quite simple. When uh, I have found that when you start to wrap this along the hook shank, uh, and it and you're and you're pulling it, uh, and you're I'm sorry, and you're hackling it forward, got tongue tied too. That that uh, this first wrap to wrap and a half are going to lay nicer and allow that hackle to stand up straight or straighter in the back, and they're not going to tend to want to like bend back and go down. So uh, so that's why. So anyway, what we want to do is make sure we have these lined up. We, well, you want to have the barbs lined up so that the, that bend points at the same spot. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay them against the hook shank so that the first barbs on the side that, that where it's going to flare open uh, we're not capturing those barbs with the thread. So I'm going to come from the upper right to the lower left, upper right to the lower left. Now I'm going to come back from the upper left down in front, splitting the distance or splitting the gap between the stem and the uh, front part of the shank. And I'm going to pull to the back a little bit. I'm going to do that a second time. And I'm just going to bring a thread wrap. Oop, I want that right behind. Okay, so now we've got those tied in pretty well. So I've got, so what I've got here is I've got this really long stem, uh, or this really long feather. That's going to get in the way. If you're using a size 12, what you need is about three inches or so. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and trim this off, just so it's out of my way. Because, like I said, we're going to be doing something just a little bit different. So now, what, what now what we're going to do instead of uh, bringing your stems forward along the side. I'm literally gonna pull that stem to the back and I'm gonna use my thumb to hold it in place. And now 
I'm going to use that stem as I'm wrapping to the back to keep the stem underneath. And what this is doing is this is going to help us build up a natural taper with the thread so that you don't have to build up a taper uh, with you know anything else um, dubbing or whatever and if you're if you don't if you're not quite happy with it go down halfway bring it back up on the atoms I tend to like a little bit bigger taper I don't know I get a lot of these things are just aesthetics and whatever you kinda like uh, I mean sometimes I guess it can matter uh, on the water that you're fishing but uh, I think for the most part it's really just what you think looks good now you can see that these things are flopping around and that's that's all right that's why we cut them cut them back now on this one nice tight wraps again and I'm just bring but this time I'm going to bring it all the way down to the back and I'm going to come all the way to the back. Now to get that tail to make sure that that's staying up, I'm going to come around the back, underneath, I'm just going to pull along the hook shank like this. You can kind of pinch those barbs together and bring one over the top. And there you go. That'll help keep that tail uh, in place. Now, if you're struggling with that tail, you can... Uh, add a little dab of glue there. Uh, I I would not do that if you can help it, uh, just because all that glue and stuff is going to add some extra weight uh, to the back of the fly. So <clears throat> next, what we're going to do is we're going to get uh, a pinch of super fine Adams Gray dubbing, and what we're looking to do is make sure that all of these fibers run in the same direction. So if you have to pull them apart and reset them, that's fine. You can kind of do it like that. Okay. And I'm going to turn my vise to the side just so I have easier access to my thread. And you can wax this thread, uh, wax the thread right now if you want to. So I'm just going to slowly start twisting this on there. And I've shown in other videos. I'll show it again here real quick. That I, when I do that, I'm kind of pulling away. This video is going to be a little bit longer. I just noticed. Sorry, but uh, there's just this is some different techniques than we've been using. So I wanted to make sure that I'm tying with you and not for you. So I hope you guys are following along. And uh, same thing here. We're going to leave a bunch just of fuzz at the uh, toward the bobbin side uh, so we can tie in more or take away. So now we're just going to start wrapping this forward and just take your time with that dubbing. And if you need to give it a little extra twist, just make sure that you're twisting it the same direction every time so that you're uh, adding to the thread noodle instead of taking away. Okay, and I'm going to zoom back in a little bit. So we're just going to kind of keep working our way forward here. Whoa. Got some dubbing that got stuck there. So I'm going to need to add just a fuzz more. And again, you want to make, when you're adding it, you want to make sure you're dubbing all the strands are going basically the same way. You can just kind of put them together. And that way it allows you to make a continuous seam. So you're not having a little gap or uh, valley in the. Uh, dubbing and we're just going to keep wrapping this guy forward Oop. and I know these guys can kind of get in the way when you're doing this but it really helps to make a nice looking fly doing it this way we've shown the other technique of how to take uh, remove some of your dubbing uh, right at the wing base and then pull it out the back so you can reattach it so this one, we're not going to do that. We're going to just bring that dubbing right on up. And I've got probably just a touch more than I need. So we'll just undo a little bit and help our taper out a little bit. Use it up since we have it. And getting the right amount of dubbing is 
it can be pretty tricky. There you go, that's pretty good. All right, so now I'm gonna bring my thread forward on the front side of the, <coughs> excuse me, hackle, and I wanna continue with the nice, tight touching turns all the way up to behind the wing. Uh, the goal here is to keep this as flat as possible right here. Now we're gonna just jump that thread to the front side and we're gonna continue it up to just right behind the eye. Uh, give yourself about a half a bodkin width. My wings are just a little far forward uh, from what I normally like. But that's okay, so you want about a half a bodkin width or so right there. Now we're gonna wrap these at the same time. So you're simply gonna take these, you wanna stand them straight up, and we're just gonna keep some nice tension on them, and we're gonna pull. And you'll see how these start to twist. So you're gonna have to really, you know, really kind of take control of those feathers and not allow them to get all crazy. If they start to split on you when you're coming underneath into the front side, move your thumb into place and use your thumb as a guide. Okay. You can also, if they're getting all kind of wonky on you, you can also draw all your barbs back as you're doing this. When you get up to behind the wings and you notice that your wings are starting to move forward, that means it's time to jump the hackle in front of the wings. Okay. See, now we've got some barbs moving forward. I'm just going to pull them to the back. And we're going to come up right to the thread like so. I'm gonna pull these hackle fibers towards me. I'm gonna bring my thread up and over, and as I do that, I'm dodging and avoiding all of those barbs, but I've gotta get down there and capture that stem. So, there you go. Okay, and normally I do it twice, but I'm going to do it three times on this one. Oh, I've got that one just going to the back on me. Dingle dang it. I just don't like that. But it's going to be what it is. You're going to have a few barbs that move on you. There's not much you can do about it usually. So now I've got that. I'm going to jump my thread. I'm going to pull the, I'm sorry, I'm going to pull the stems to the back. I'm going to bring that thread to the front and place a couple really tight wraps to the front. I can just pull everything back. Like so, we can correct all this in just a minute. And I'm gonna build my little Adam's head. Now these heads should be, oop, stuck myself, in all reality about half the size of the eye of the hook. And so once you have this here, I'm gonna go ahead and whip finish. I'm going to pull everything back to make sure I get everything out the way so those barbs are not going to get caught in my thread. I'm going to do three, pull. I'm going to do another three, and pull. Okay. Oh, hey, it snapped for me. Cool. Need a little thread sticking out there. All right. Now I can come in with either my cuticle clippers or my scissors and snap these stems. On these dry flies, I really like these cuticle clippers. You know, you can buy a pair for like a dollar or something, man, and uh, they really will save your goat a lot of the times on these uh, dry flies. So now, since everything is all still kind of moved back and in this awkward position, uh, you can go ahead and finish the front. I'm going to use a little solar res here. You can use your head cement, a little UV uh, glue of another brand or whatever. And I know it's all right up there on the eye of the hook, so don't worry about that. Just kind of get it in there. And before we torch it, or if you're using super glue or other adhesives, uh, you know, it's nice to have a little piece of peacock curl or just a little... Uh, uh, little end of a, a hackle feather that you're not going to use. I'll run that through there. I don't know if I can get my fingers on it. There we, go. there we go. Pull it through. And before you torch it, you're going to move everything back into place. Just like so. 
zap it, and there you go. Sorry this video is a little bit longer. We did a few other techniques in here that we haven't been doing uh, for this series. Uh, so I wanted to show those to you. And um, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it helps. Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe, share. Uh, and also you can join our Facebook group, uh, Fly Tying for Beginners at, at Facebook. And uh, happy tying.